Hey there, happy Saturday. I hope everyone's having a nice weekend. Uh, it's a beautiful day in Detroit. I was trying to record this out in the park, but it's actually a little breezier than I realized and I just couldn't make it work. It was too windy. Uh, but I uh, am looking forward today to sharing with you the, a poem by one of the towering figures of uh, 20th century Mexican literature, Octavio Paz. Fox is very interested in hearing about Octavio Paz today, right? Um, Octavio Paz is, among other things, was rather, among other things, a poet, uh, an essayist, a novelist, a playwright, a translator, an editor, a publisher. He was a cultural ambassador representing, isn't this so cute? This is something he does. Um, representing uh, Mexico kind of worldwide culturally, as well as an actual diplomat um, representing the Mexican government. So he's one of those just appallingly accomplished people who make you wonder what you're doing with your life, sitting around reading poetry. Um, but I first came across his work when I was in college at Wayne State, when I was just a baby, when I was 18. Uh, I took an intro to Spanish class with one of my most beloved teachers, Marilyn Rashid, who's a Detroit poet also, um, someone who I ought to read uh, for this series. And she uh, introduced our class to the work of Octavio Paz. I really fell in love with it. And at the time I purchased this um, collected poems, uh, 57 through 87, um, which it's important to know is all in translation. So this whole work is translated, all these poems are translated by Elliot Weinberger. Um, but what I love about this book is that it has um, something that I think maybe every work in translation ought to have, which is, you know, on one, on one page it's the original, and on the other page it is the translated version. Um, which, you know, at the time I thought was, was good for me because I was learning Spanish and I was excited to read Spanish. I'm sorry to say in the years since I haven't really kept up with my Spanish practice, so it's not um, all that valuable now, but still nice to have. And I, uh, I recommend this for anyone who, you know, can, can read both Spanish and English. It's nice to go back and forth. Um, in terms of, of Octavio Paz's poetry, um, it's very Protean, I guess. It, he works in all kinds of different forms, um, some traditional forms, some avant-garde forms. Uh, he writes poems that are as short as two or three lines that are just lovely and expressive um, to poems that are sort of book length, um, comfortable in all of those different uh, idioms. And when I think of the work, some of the themes or images that come to my mind are time and history and landscapes and the body. Um, th those, those themes seem to recur in the work that I have read of Octavio Paz, but there's a lot that I haven't read. Um, and something else that I think is notable is that he was, you know, certainly very experimental. He hung out with the surrealists. He, you know, he had a real kind of um, unfettered sense of what poetry could look like, be like, sound like. And so there are these very visual uh, explorations, which are so, so beautiful and I think important for you to see. Um, Oh, I love this this page. Um, just, you know, kind of astonishing things that you happen upon in the course of reading Octavio Paz. Uh, the poem that I chose to read today is called Proem, P-R-O-E-M, which I think is a nod to the fact that it is prose-like poetry. Um, I'm not going to read it in Spanish. That would be really embarrassing for everybody. Uh, there is, however, a word in this poem, which is one of those fabulous, um, like, ancient Mexican names that I'm going to do my best to pronounce. So please bear with me on that. Um, and that, that name is of a, a figure from Mexican history who in the um, 15th century, I think, I read, was a poet slash warrior slash architect. So how about that for career goals? Um, what I love about this poem is that it is about poetry. Uh, it's a sort of poetic exploration of what poetry is or can be. And I should mention it comes from 
a collection called A Tree Within, which is um, Pa's poetry from 76 to 87. At times, poetry is the vertigo of bodies, and the vertigo of joy, and the vertigo of death. The walk with eyes closed along the edge of the cliff, and the verbena in submarine gardens. The laughter that sets fire to rules and the holy commandments. The descent of parachuting words onto the sands of the page. The despair that boards a paper boat and crosses for 40 nights and 40 days the night sorrow sea and the day sorrow desert. The idolatry of the self and the desecration of the self and the dissipation of the self. The beheading of epithets the burial of mirrors, the recollections of pronouns freshly cut in the garden of Epicurus and the garden of Neitzahual Coyotl, the flute solo on the terrace of memory and the dance of flames in the cave of thought, the migrations of millions of verbs, wings and claws, seeds and hands, the nouns, bony and full of roots, planted on the waves of language, the love unseen, and the love unheard, and the love unsaid, the love in love. Syllables. Seeds. Thank you.